uh, last summer for we had clinics for it was actually six days. We had clinics for two days, and then we went up and we had our booth at the Legends Fan Fest in Charlotte. And I refereed. Uh, God, this was a wild night. We were. I have, sure to, I have to ask. Yeah, I, I have to ask. I have to cut you off real quick. You yeah. refereed, and how big are you? Oh, oh, I refereed. Oh, uh, this was this is an interesting show. This is a real interesting topic when you say I refereed because this was not any kind of a sanctioned match. This was like at four o'clock in the morning. This is just one story for that trip, uh, and it involves uh, it involves Rob Van Dam. Actually, uh, we were we were at this bar uh, that was across from the Hyatt Regency where they held uh, the fan fest. And we'll still actually still stay in touch with the guys from that bar. But we were over there every night. I mean, it was we were actually paid some huge compliments by uh, B. Brian Blair and uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. They said you guys, you guys are the only ones that are old school because there were a lot of indie wrestlers there, and they, they had an indie show that were there, and we were the only ones that were up all night partying, like me and Phil. And Phil's Phil's uncle is. Uh, who was the great Captain Lou Albano. So he grew up somewhat in the business. Uh, he, he, he doesn't talk a whole lot about that, but he grew up going to a lot of the shows, and that's why he, he always wanted to get into, into pro wrestling. But this one night, we were out at this bar, and it was me, um, B. Brian Blair, who's a bit of a shooter, we find out, too, uh, RVD, and Phil, and uh, a few of the fans that we kind of brought shit. with us. And... Um, and it got to be the, the guy who was last called. The guy kept the bar open for us. And if you, if you, when I say the fans, and I don't want to certainly, you know, I don't want to say the Phil whatever act out of school, but uh, it was it was uh, some of the female fans that we had brought over there. And uh, the, the bar closed. Uh, the, the bar closed. They kept it open for us. Uh, well, basically, the guy made an open bar for us, and uh, ended up. We all started wrestling in the bar. Me, Eddie, Brian, Blair, Rob Van Dam, and Phil, and we were all having had quite a quite a bit of alcohol. Uh, so I don't think any of us was at our at our sharpest. But we come to find out, you know, beat Brian Blair. He, he's a bit of a shooter. He, he, he can he can hang. He can go. So we go out uh, to the pond. We all go out to the pond, and um, Rob Van Dam jumps in the pond. There's a pond. Where this bar is one of the hotels. So RVD the belly flops into the pond. Yeah, he just does like the frog splash. Exactly. Frog splashes <laughs> into the pond. And there's some fans around. Uh, we got these, got these ladies, and, and I and I was able to steal away the one that Phil was talking to because Phil jumps right into the pond after him. And uh, first, I think first B. Brian Blair for the first go around. I think B. Brian Blair was the referee. Uh, and they started going at it in the pond and giving these ladies a little show and the guys that ran the bar that would come out to watch uh, in the pond for a little bit of pond wrestling. And then I jumped in and, and, uh, and I refereed, I refereed the second goal. And it was kind of a, it was kind of a, well, I guess you kind of call a, a soft shoot or a, or a work shoot because it was a little bit of both going on, you know, pulling at each other and then, and then they, and then I remember Phil um, doing the forearm smashes to the back on uh, RVD there. Um, but it got it, it got pretty it got pretty fun. It was pretty and, and it was funny because um, everybody thought that Phil had punched Rob Van Dam in the face when they heard the story the next day. But that didn't happen at all. What actually happened was Rob Van Dam went to do a flip to jump in, and and like you said, he had a lot of alcohol and he smashed his face up against uh, the uh, the rocks, you know, as you're going into the pond. And um, and he bloody himself up pretty bad. He cut his lip up. He was, he was bleeding all the way. So this the match even had some color. Had some color to the <laughs> Yeah, the one, thing I, the one thing I wish is that I could have recorded that. Um, and, and that was the thing I said. We all said that afterwards. And, and I think somebody's phone, it was Rob Van Dam's phone, actually was destroyed. Uh, in the melee, but um, that was just an example. One that we had, so we had a blast um, at that fan fest, uh, um, hanging out with. And, it, and it's really cool. And, and I would really recommend. We're probably going to have a booth again. But I'm talking to Greg Price. He puts that on. Um, Jr. is going to have his new movie coming out at that one called 605 on TBS. And uh, it kind of ties into what 
you were asking me about with Gorgeous George with the book with Stephanie because uh, she kind of went MIA for a while, but she is she is back in the fold. Uh, she's back here in South Carolina, and next week we're supposed to meet up to uh, to try to wrap up this project. Um, so hopefully, hopefully that book will come to fruition here by the end of the summer. Yeah, hopefully. And I, I remember you telling me about it. And, uh, I was actually very, very interested. I can't wait. Hopefully it gets done and I can read it. Um, but I did hear a name uh, a couple of times. You mentioned uh, B. Brian Blair. Now, I have to ask, does he at all know how much the Iron Sheik hates him? You know, we talked about that, of course. Yeah, and that, you know what? I think that's the most frequently asked question that he gets. And I kind of called bullshit out of him, and that's why I said he's a bit of a shooter, because he was telling us that um, he got the Iron Sheik in what, what we call like a double wrist lock in old school wrestling, and it's kind of like similar to a Kimura. And I was thinking, no way. The Iron Sheik was, uh, was a loop of coach when he came here. You know, and and people are still still in great shape. But we, we did a little pushing and pulling with them, both of us, and uh, Phil and I. And of course, we were all drinking. But he's he's strong. He can he can hang. He can hang for a base. He's a bit of a shooter. Now, you you get RVD in a pond with Phil Baroni, and you're the ref. How did anybody get their shoulders counted down? Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. I don't think that we were. You know, it was kind of beyond the point where we were thinking straight of how this match was gonna go. They all just jumped in a pond and then we kinda of declared that there would be that there would be a match. And it, and it, there was they were put they were going at it for a little while and and, and then and then R V D when when R V D was bleeding when he, and and this was bad. I mean this was one of these things where if he and, and I, he knows how to flip and he obviously knows how to flip and land and everything. But with all he was consuming the way that he did this flip and he hit his face he could, he, he could, he could imagine if, if RVD had like broken his neck or something out there during this fan fest. I mean, uh, with the fans around and us around, I mean, we might have been complicit in that. I might have been complicit for being the referee in that match. But if the fans all kind of came to a hush when that happened because he was, he was legitimately bleeding and, um, and, and, uh, he was kind of like holding his face for a little while and, you know, kind of like you get when you, knocked down and, and, and uh, um, after that it kind of all stopped but I remember when we were walking back to the um, uh, hotel and to the elevators and we were trying to walk back and keep these, keep these young ladies with us I remember Phil was so intoxicated that he was having a hard time standing up you know and towards the end like I, I was holding him up to bring him uh, into the elevator so that was a fun that was a fun uh trip, a very, very fun trip. And you know, something that we did on the tra- trip that was really cool, and somebody that I want to give a huge shout out to in the world of, of pro wrestling is Jim Cornette, because when we first got there, Jim Cornette was, had a booth next to us, and we were watching, and we were watching how he was selling, and he was the only one that was engaging people. He was the only one that was standing up, because a lot of the pro wrestlers don't like to do these things. They just sit there like Greg the Hammer Valentine, you know, they just sit there and they don't even really want to talk to people. Well, well, we came up with it, Phil actually the one who came up with it. We gave every fan who bought something, who made a purchase, a promo, their own custom promo with their phone. It was like just a minute long. And we gave them a wrestling name. So we do a, we did a promo with them. So it was kind of cool. They had something to take, to take back. But that was a blast. And I think we're going to do that again this year. I'm working on the details with great prices and if, if Phil can get back here for it. But that was, that, that, that fan fest was a blast. And uh, it's one that anybody who lives in the Mid-Atlantic or the Southeast, I would strongly recommend check that one out. It's going to be the second weekend in August this year, I think. But it's got some huge names, and you can and you can hang in. If you're a fan, you can come and you can hang out with the uh, hang out with the wrestlers. It's not uh, like it's a closed thing. Like I said, they, they're all staying there at the hotel, and if you stick around and you go to the local bars, you can hang out with them. That's awesome. I, 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 and who knows? And who knows? Maybe you could get to referee the RBD Phil Brody match. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, 